We are set. All right, the oh. September 25th meeting of the Parks Committee will come to order, and we will note uh, Alderman Burnett is, is excused due to a work uh, commitment. Alderman Nicholson is excused. Alderman Johnson is here. Uh, Alderman Weary, and thank you once again. Out of the bullpen, President Stoyer. <laughs> what do we do without you? And I have an approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Stoyer to approve. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. See approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Stoyer. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. D, regular business discussion with possible action on the request by Alderman Vanderlees to redo the blacktop pathway of Beaver Dam to Fireman's Park. Did you uh, want to go first, uh, Alderman Vanderlees, or do you want staff to comment? What do you? Uh, we'll let our director. Okay, director. All right, so I have included a map in the agenda packet. I do want to note that I did amend the agenda yesterday, so make sure you're looking at the amended agenda. Um, and this project has been under discussion for several years. There's an existing blacktop path just south of Fireman's Park in between Stony Brook Lane and Beaver Dam Drive. Uh, this pathway is on a steep hill and it's in very poor condition. So Public Works and the Parks Department have been coordinating this project for several years, uh, trying to get this project completed. Uh, both of us had a lack of funding. Uh, but right now we're at the point where we're ready to proceed. So Public Works already hired a contractor to repave the section of trail that you see on this map. Uh, paving is, is scheduled for the week of September 30th. Uh, once the paving is completed, uh, parks crews will come in and do all the site restoration. So we'll come in, place the topsoil, uh, seed it, place erosion mat, and the project should be done in, in the next couple of weeks. So you know, at this point, you can either receive and place it on file, or if you feel more comfortable, you can either uh, direct park staff to work with uh, Public Works uh, to jointly replace the asphalt pathway. Alderman oh, Vanderlist? That sounds like a real good. Uh, this might be, this might be a record approval. I would make a motion to direct park staff to work directly with Public Works in the completion of that project. I'll second that. Motion by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Stoyer. Under discussion. Boy. John asks, he gets it. Thanks a lot, Jim. <laughs> Should have had you ask for the poll. Good news. <laughs> right, we didn't, we didn't vote yet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. Those in favor? Aye. Right. Opposed? Uh, motion carried. Thanks, Jeff. Over at Vanderlees. Uh, just two, discussion with possible action on the request for the Wildlife Sanctuary to reinstate the deer management program and to research the deer management issue throughout the city. Right, we held this for two weeks. So yes. Yeah. So at the last park committee, staff was asked to gather more information on allowing bow hunting at the wildlife sanctuary and also research the deer management program throughout the city to see how well it's working. Uh, the citywide program is managed by uh, staff at the wildlife sanctuary. We do have Matt Rupnick here, uh, who is the person in charge of managing that program. Uh, so you can come up to the podium and give a brief description about the history of the program and how well it's working throughout the city. And then from there, uh, we'll talk about the sanctuary and some thoughts we have on that. All right, Matt. All right. Thank you for having me. Um, so I, as Dan mentioned, I oversee the City of Green Bay Deer Management Program with the with Dan, uh, under the direction of Dan Tichai, as well as a couple of other individuals. Um, John Beckley from Brown County Land Management, um, Josh Martinez, Wisconsin DNR biologist, as well as Austin um, Larson, who is our, one of our park rangers, also assists with the program. Um, the City of Green Bay Deer Management Program is an archery-only management hunt within the city limits of Green Bay. The program began with the subcommittee of the City Council being formed for the specific purpose of deer management throughout the city limits. After two years of planning, the first hunt occurred in spring of 2003. Um, the first locations were in Baird's Creek Parkway, eventually expanding to Heenan's Rock Park on the west side as well. Um, from 2003 until 2013, D Wisconsin DNR issued permit encompassed public as well as privately owned properties within the city limits of Green Bay, totaling approximately 128 sites throughout the city limits. Um, after 2014, the program went exclusively to public land owned by the 
city of Green Bay and a few areas that were also owned by Brown County within the city limits of Green Bay through an agreement with Brown County. As the Brown program stands today, there are a total of 64 sites throughout the city limits of Green Bay located in Barrett's Creek, UWGB campus, Henus Route Park, and several others in huntable areas within Green Bay city limits. There are currently 75 hunters enrolled in the program. Um, I just have a couple um, statistics as far as from the uh, last couple years hunt. Um, it's been fairly consistent year to year. Uh, and I do have a breakdown of each district. Um, but the last two years, let's see, 2017, um, we had a total of 78 deer harvested. In this past year, 2018, we had 75 deer harvested. And so far in 2019, we had 18 deer harvested throughout the city. Um, the season began on September 14th and runs through January 31st. When is that again? January 31st was the beginning? Yeah, January 31st is the end of the season. And what's the beginning? September 14th. So the same, it's the same weekend as the, the rest of the state. Anyone have any questions on the general program itself, sure. or questions about your own district? Yeah, I, I do. I don't think you. I don't think there's any hunting in District Eight that I know of, unless you're hunting in Colburn. <laughs> no, no, there are only um, there are only maybe four, five districts that are actually have huntable land in them. Um, so that's District One, District Two, District Five, District Seven, and District Twelve. Are the only ones that we have. Were any of the areas? Any of the years that didn't include the um, wildlife sanctuary? Uh, no, not in the last several years. But did it? it at the, to my knowledge, at the beginning of the program, they did include, it was a separate permit, but they did include um, the sanctuary grounds as well. And did that end at some point? or? Uh, I've only been involved with the deer management program since about 2017. Okay. So yeah, it, it was uh, in the program at, you know, at the beginning. At some point, it was uh, taken out of the program. I'm, I'm not sure which year exactly. But since the, since it, we haven't been, uh, it hasn't been part of the program. The deer herd has uh, grown substantially. Alderman Johnson, mm -hmm. do you have? I mean, at least this communication, I understand that it was referred back to address for the entire city. But with respect to wildlife sanctuary in particular, do we have actual? numbers in terms of how many deer are located there I mean that seems to be a slightly different circumstance because mm -hmm. it is partially contained yeah the last number that I had heard um, and I didn't I wasn't able to check that number down um, was from about four or five years ago when Ben Nelson was still involved with the program they had did a spot search as far as numbers um, and I want to say it was well over 100 Okay, so that's, but that's five years old. I mean, that's yeah. the lifespan almost of a deer. So, a wild deer at least. So, I mean, if, if okay, so we haven't done any, though, new number? We have not since, with the, since the hunting was not. Okay. Um, and then how, I mean, that's my other question, I think, then, is how do you uh, actually identify the number of deer? Is it just through spot searches? general spot searches. Um, we do have trail cameras that we have placed out there as well, um, just to monitor deer as well as other wildlife. Okay, so there's no other additional scientific approach that's taken with respect to? Not that we have taken at this point. Okay. Um, and right now, and, and I think, I mean, I think I got the answer here, but right now uh, everything is archery and it is currently not allowed in the wildlife sanctuary? That is correct. Okay. Um, have you had any, I mean, with the archery hunts, have you had any challenges in particular thinking about, because archery is not always a clean uh, scenario, right? I mean, archery is more prone, prone to uh, wounded animals. Uh, from your experience and, and observation anecdotally, has, has that been a challenge at all with this type of hunt? Um, I do ask that they report any problems to me, they are required to. I have not had any. Um, I have had, they report any lost arrows, any deer that were not able to be retained. Mm -hmm. um, obviously with respect to trespassing laws, um, that is something that they have to be mindful of as well. 
but they are to make any every effort to retain that deer. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Strike. Thank you, Chair. Um, Alder Johnson asked one of the questions as far as the number of deer. That was my concern as far as you would think that we could get a handle. We could get a handle on that a little bit. Um, did you mention that it, uh, when was the last year that the hunt was allowed at the wildlife sanctuary? I want to say it was about four to five years ago, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Um, I mean, I've gotten a number of, well, we'll talk about that once amongst ourselves. I got some emails from some folks, and I think one, one of the, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get out of this, but I, um, I think the biggest thing for me was the numbers of deer, and, and uh, Elder Johnson brings up a good point about the cleanliness of the hunt, the fact that's in the city limits. Uh, it is a wildlife sanctuary, which you know, sanctuary means sanctuary. So, we'll, we'll discuss that. But I, I think I got what I needed for now. Thank you, Elder well Johnson. Yeah, and I meant to ask this as a follow-up question. Sorry, when I asked if you knew how many there were, the follow-up question is: Is do we have target numbers? Um, for what we might want to see in any particular area within the city. As far, sorry, I mean, clarify that, are you? So like, I, for example, wildlife sanctuary, uh, I'm, I'm gonna take the easy target here, no pun mm -hmm. intended. The wildlife sanctuary is, um, I mean, I think that the deer actually add something to that environment, but obviously you don't want the population to become out of control. So do we have a target number with what we would like to see in that area? Um, we don't have anything set as of yet. Okay. Um, that is something that we would discuss further. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Matt, if I could, what is your title at the sanctuary? Senior Animal Keeper. Okay. Alder Newton Steyer. Thank you, Chair. Um, there was a task force of some sort that was uh, at, was there some years ago, and now that was under Nel Ben Nelson. So was that four years ago as well, that there was a, something in place that was studying this issue? Yeah, I believe, and Ben was very involved with uh, studying the num numbers as far as mm -hmm. number of deer on the property. Um, I know he did on a couple occasions did those spot searches. Um, basically what that entails is driving through um, and spotlighting and just getting general numbers mm -hmm. of deer. Um, other than that, it was usually, Ben was usually the lead on that, um, and he just reported the numbers. For any reason, can you tell us why that that group stopped? Was it because Mr. Nelson left, or was there was there another reason that you know of? Um, that, to my knowledge, I was just directed you to. You were just directed. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Anything else? Anything else, Matt? I think so. Oh, you mind taking a question from Alder Lafayette? Well, I think this probably more for Dan. I think it was probably because the K four came in, and the school said there's no. No weapons, what, a thousand feet of the building or the school, so that could be why it ended. Very possible. Uh, I don't know the history of that. Yeah. Yeah, Any other questions for Matt? Um, <coughs> no. Okay. I think he did well. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Anybody else here for this item? Anybody else? All right. Well, questions for, for Dan? Or, Dan, do you have anything you want to add to that? I do. I do want to don't you? <laughs> Come on up. I was only able to go out Monday night and Tuesday night, and I went and talked to my neighbors. I got about half of them. There was maybe 45 houses, something like that, between um, Bay Beach and Dan's. So I went to the east of Dan, I mean west of Dan's, because Dan had said before maybe they could do it east of Dan's. And I got 35 people that were home signed, stating that they want something done because they're just seeing deer. I mean, they're just devastating everything. You know what that? Yeah. That's part of the next <sighs> And we just want, you know, something done to control them. Okay, How many are there? Three There's pages. 35. Okay. That I got that were home, Thank you. and I was only able to go Monday and Tuesday night because I was gone all weekend. And was gone then. But um, yeah, <coughs> another thing I got to look at humanely, if we're allowing the deer to become, the deer herd in the sanctuary so big that they're having trouble finding enough food, 
you could end up next spring finding dead deer starved. That's another thing that I'm looking at. I look at it kind of that way too. Not just that they're coming in and eating everything up, which is bad. Um, if you saw my yard, they showed a little bit on fire, but I mean, I gave up. I can't afford to be putting out. Every two, three days, I have to put this stuff down, and now they're still eating. It's getting too expensive. And a lot of other neighbors, I mean, they're, they're really, they've had it up to here, right. the amount of deer. And when I was walking out Monday night, it was dark. Deer were standing on the side of the road, and a motorcycle never saw me went through. If they would have come out, they could have killed them. You, we have to look at this, too. And there's been deer that have been killed. The car's been hitting them. Did you did highway. you reach out by chance at all to the police department or to get any number of crash data on, on deer? Heads? No, no. I just I saw I saw the one on Dan's. Uh, not saw it when it happened, but I saw it laying there. Uh, the one that was on Webster Street, which actually was hit from on the highway. I found out after someone told me. Yeah, it was on top and it was hit. Forward. And there was another one on East Shore Drive, but two people told me of two other incidents that they saw the deer. So you're in favor of some type of hunt? Yeah, just unfortunately so there has to be. On. There has to be. Okay. I mean, I like seeing the deer, but it's just it's just too many. Okay. Uh, do, any questions for Aldo Lefebvre or Lord Johnson? Um, Aldo Lefebvre, I'm going to uh, read a quote for you. Okay. Um, Our family moved to the Bay in 1971 because of the wildlife beauty of the area and possibility of swimming again at Bay Beach. Do you know who wrote that? <laughs> I do love the wildlife. <laughs> we have turkeys all over. We have possums. I had a flying squirrel in my attic. Uh, well, we had a wood duck nest in, trying to nest in my fireplace. I mean, we have wildlife. Well, and the reason the I bring it up is that we can't, you know, <coughs> we could do a little bit with that, but we can't. Can't shoot. Can't control well, the deer. We and, can't. And, and I ask the question partially in jest, but partially because oftentimes you see, I mean, individuals that move into a certain area because oh. they want the wildlife, but the second that the wildlife is in their flowers, then they, you know, want to call the herd. So, um, I just want to make sure that yeah, any decision I think that comes from this committee that it we're making it be. based on mm -hmm. data, and yeah. and and that's why I was asking mm -hmm. the question about, about numbers. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we can have that discussion a little yeah. bit, but yeah. I, and, and so right. maybe I would just ask the same question mm -hmm. of you. Are you aware of any data that exists? No, no, not on the numbers at all. No, I have no idea. I just know that we, at times, especially in the winter, you can see them at night in the snow, we can have 12, 13 in our, in our yard. That's just me. Okay. And then you talk about other people down further. They're not just, you know, and they just move all over. They're, um, what else I was going to say? I, I love wildlife. I do. I grew up in the country and I love where I live. I love all that. But I also said it's not humane because they're so hungry. That's why they're coming over by us. We got a lot of good stuff to eat. They're trying to, you know, feed themselves before the winter. And I, I, we bought our house in 1972. There was no deer for 42 years. We never had, never saw a deer in our yards anywhere. We never saw them. And then they started coming in gradually, and then all of a sudden it just, so many. So that says to me, there's too many deer over there, <laughs> that they have to come into our yards to find something to eat. Any other questions on so them, Jensen? Whatever can be done, we just want something. Any other questions from the committee? Anything else, Alder? No. Nope. All right, thank you. Yep. Director. Yeah, I do have a few things to add. So I think in general, and I think Matt can, would agree with this, I have talked to the staff out there. I think in general, uh, we are seeing larger numbers of deer than we have in previous years. Uh, that's an accurate statement. Uh, if you're looking for numbers to justify reinstating the program, uh, we could uh, do another assessment uh, like what we did in the past. And it would take some time to do that. And I don't know if we would have those numbers generated uh, in order to go on for this season. Uh, as Matt mentioned, uh, the end of the season would be the end of January. So I'd have to talk to staff to see how we would go about uh, compiling that data if you want to you want to base your decision on data. So I can't guarantee we'd be bonding this season uh, if that's the direction you want to go, but we could go that route if you choose to. Uh, 
just a couple other things. So one, one thing that was discussed at the last park committee was whether or not the school district was in favor of allowing bow hunting with the 4K program there. Uh, so I did speak to Michelle Langenfeld on this issue. Uh, she reached out to uh, their legal counsel. She reached out to a few board members. I'm not sure exactly who she reached out to, but the general consensus from the school district for what Michelle told me uh, was that uh, they wouldn't have any concerns if the bow hunting happened when the students aren't there. Uh, so if it were to be allowed, uh, one of the conditions that they would recommend, and I would be in agreement with that, is that we would only allow hunting on the days when there's no classes in session. So that would be Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, the other concern that came up was the safety of the people at the sanctuary. There's a lot of people there walking the trails throughout the day. Uh, so one other condition that we could look at uh, would be only allowing hunting to occur prior to opening and after we close. So our hours of operation are 8 to 4.30. Uh, so there's plenty of daylight in the morning to, to do some hunting. And there's plenty of daylight in the evening, at least right now. It gets a little more challenging as the season progresses, uh, but we would allow hunting you know, after uh, hours. Uh, so those are the primary concerns. Uh, there would be other stipulations that I would, that I would uh, encourage the committee to consider. Uh, obviously one would be that uh, only people who are enrolled in the deer management program would be allowed to uh, hunt there. Um, there would absolutely be no hunting within a thousand feet of the school. Uh, because that is the mandate. There is no hunting allowed within a thousand feet of any school, so we wouldn't allow any hunting within a thousand feet. Um, and then the city would handpick the hunters who are enrolled in the program, who we've worked with in the past, who are, who are known to be capable hunters, who follow the rules, and we would hand select those hunters. That's how it was done previously when hunting was allowed at the sanctuary and that's what we would recommend uh, for this. And then in addition, uh, we would set a target number of deer to be harvested, and as part of that, um, the first two deer uh, that would be um, taken uh, would be donated to the sanctuary as food for the animals. So it would be giving back to the sanctuary, which would help offset some of our uh, ex maintenance expenses for food. Um, the other question that came up is, um, you know, would the DNR be okay with this, or are there other means or methods uh, of doing this, or handling this in another way? So I did reach out to the DNR. Uh, if we are going to manage the deer on the site, there's really only two ways we can do it that's acceptable to the DNR. Uh, one would be to uh, do it through this program because they are, you know, we work jointly with them managing this program. The other option is to hire a private company to manage the deer instead, uh, instead of using uh, uh, hunters who are enrolled in the program. Uh, what is not allowed by the state, per the DNR, what they told me, is transporting deer is not permitted in the state of Wisconsin, and managing the deer by, um, by birth control, that is not uh, permitted in the state of Wisconsin either. So the only two types of management we would have is enroll people in, enroll this in our deer management program or hire a consultant to come in and manage it for us. Questions? Oh, oh I'm sorry. <coughs> so, Dan and we, we heard from staff as well, I mean, other than stories or spot checks, I guess, do we have any evidence that suggests that uh, the deer herd is overpopulated? What we are viewing, we are, our opinion is based on what we see. I mean, our staff is out there every day. We're out in the trails. We are seeing more deer than we have in previous years. The only other data that we would have is not formal data, uh, but we look at the vegetation and where they're eating. And uh, they are eating quite a bit of vegetation around the sanctuary also, uh, which has been somewhat problematic. But like I said, we have no data to substantiate whether or not the herd has grown in numbers or whether or not they're within the standards of what the DNR would recommend for herd numbers. 
So if that's something you're looking for, we can explore that as an option with getting, gathering that data. For well, where I'm struggling, I guess, is how do we even begin to set a target number of animals to harvest yeah. without even knowing what's out there? Mm -hmm. So I, I think if that is going to be the recommendation is to uh, set a target number, I think we have to know what the basis is mm -hmm. for us to effectively make that recommendation. Um, and, and particularly because of the uniqueness of the facility, right, and that it is partially contained, there, there is that viewing value uh, that, that is, you know, in, inherent with the mission. Now, when we look at, I think, other areas of the city, I mean, it, it's, it's obviously, it's just a different scenario. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I mean, if we're talking about this specifically with the wildlife sanctuary, those are my questions. I mean, if we're looking at citywide, I mean, are, do we have other areas within the city that are experiencing chronic complaints or concerns about the deer population? Uh, it kind of ebbs and flows. I mean, there's certain years um, when we get more complaints than others uh, in certain areas. Um, have you heard of any recently this year? This year, I haven't gotten any co any calls or issues other than this one at the sanctuary. Have you received anything, Matt? I have not received any reports of any issues with deer as far as increased numbers in that any specific district or area of the city. So in staff's opinion then, is there anything that we need to do with the balance of the city right now? Not with the city as a whole, other than continue with the program. Okay, thank you. Well, Mr. Um, you did answer one of my questions, Dan, which was, can, can any of these deer be relocated? And the DNR won't allow that. You cannot re relocate deer. That's correct? what they told me. Okay. Unless you want to put them on the graves yard. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I concur with Alder Johnson on this. I really, you know, we, we need some data, I think. You know, I, I realize that spot checks are fine and, you know, visuals are fine, but, you know, if, if we had some numbers to say, okay, we've got 400 deer and, we, and sustainability is 250 or, or whatever, you know, I, I think we, we on, at, on council, I think, need more than just anecdotal evidence. So I think it's important that we have that. I, I did have one citizen, I don't know if I'll bore you with, with this, so it's just an email that he sent. And all right, he, um, he just stated, he just said, what is this craziness about possibly allowing a bow hunt? Bow hunters to kill deer at the wildlife sanctuary. This is completely ludicrous, especially since it's over the condition of a couple of people's yards. This is just a citizen talking. And he sent an email to himself. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how to do that. My mom brought me there all the time because it's a sanctuary. So he emphasized the fact that it's a sanctuary. So that, that's the perception that you know some people will have to get over. I, I told him, I said, we will discuss the situation. I said, it's a bit more complex than meets the eye. Uh, I think the fact that you know deer do starve, I think that's, uh, that's not a, a good scene. So we have to look at that as well and you know, figure out what kind of balance there is between the hunt and natural processes. And I, I, I can't make the decision on it very well unless I have some better numbers. So that's what I go with. Okay. Uh, Alder Lefebvre? Uh, there are 100 households uh, in our neighborhood association and it's all along um, East Shore Drive. So there's, a, there's, a, there's 100 households. So it's not just <laughs> a couple. I just okay. want to say that. And then, Dan, the 1,000 feet except, you know, around the building, mm -hmm. I can understand that. But would that allow, you know, I don't know where they conjugate when they are in the sanctuary. Um, would that allow... That would if you had to call the herd, say, do your data and it shows it's you know, necessary. There are areas um, around the perimeter, um, it would be west of Dan's Avenue, uh, that are outside of that thousand feet. Okay, so we feel, would allow. feel that if you did, then it would be, you'd be able to. So we would be able to allow some uh, hunting on both sides of Dan's Avenue and still uh, be within the 1,000-foot 
uh, regulation of a, of a no weapon zone. Okay. It just, yeah, if it, you know, if the figures come out and you say you have to call a certain amount, just want to make sure that you can do it. Okay. Right. Yep. So I, I think to the, to the comments that Alder Story was sharing, I, I think um, the resident in his district is right in that I think that the optics on this do not look good for the wildlife sanctuary. You have a facility in particular that's designed to rehab animals and uh, release them back into the wild and we're you know, potentially <coughs> considering uh, a kill within, um, you know, within the perimeter of the actual facility. It seems to be in direct conflict with, with the mission of the organization. And so I am not opposed to managing the herd if in fact it does need it. But I think there's a couple things that, that I need to be comfortable with the decision. One is, I think we need to be talking about numbers, not only what exists, and, and, it, and I feel like that needs to be more than just spot checks. Um, there, there, there actually are you know, scientific ways to achieve, that, that, um, to achieve those numbers. Um, I think we need to identify what an appropriate target number is if we're going to make a recommendation in terms of the number of, uh, the number of deer that we need to uh, to cull. But the other piece that I really think we do need to explore a little bit more is how do we do it with humanity that is in alignment with the mission of the organization. I think we've been presented with two options and I would maybe push that back on staff a little bit and say are there ways that we can naturally select out the herd that you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what that would be. I'm not, I, I mean, I'm a deer hunter. I'm not a deer management expert. But there are, there are oftentimes can be ways, things that you can do uh, where deer naturally kind of, I guess, weed themselves out. So um, I, w I would ask staff to maybe, I don't know if it makes sense to work with the DNR, um, with obviously the staff that we have, but to maybe explore some additional options that might allow us to do something that, again, is an indirect conflict with the mission of the institution. Thank you. So, well, just, just a few more points tonight. Dan, you mentioned that it would be September till January, or the end of December for the hunt. I think with the fact that you would have to gather data, et cetera, I think it would be difficult to have it this year. The fact that you got the 4K school there, you know, you got the 1,000 foot perimeter, you know, that is that an exact perimeter? You know, I, I think that you can generally find out where that might be, but there's always a chance that it could come in closer. There's also concern for me that people would, you know, when the, when the park closes, and there's always a chance for some stragglers, you know, they don't, you know, it's hard for staff to make sure that everybody's out of the, out of the facility. I don't know if you've had problems like that before, but just a couple of scenarios to think about, and I think I would feel more comfortable if those are addressed completely. Sure. So. All right. Uh, Alder Lefebvre, and back to Alder Johnson. Oh, I should answer yours. You know, the deforestation has something. And they close the trails all down. But when they're doing it, they're closed, and it's noted. People know not to go on the trails, even you know, try. So I mean, that's something that can be done. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I think the sanctuary, probably something like that, maybe would do something like that. They're not going to allow. Like it, I said, we know. close our trails at 4:30. Yeah. And open them up. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be really. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Alder Johnson. Right, so then I would just make a motion to refer this back to staff uh, with a couple provisions. One is. Uh, to scientifically identify the number of deer that exist in a wildlife sanctuary, to establish a target number that's desired for that space, um, to leave the balance of the city in its current status, meaning that, I mean, the, the hunts that we already have in place, that that just is preserved, stays in place. Um, and uh, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. Oh, uh, identify other alternative ways um, to reduce the herd other than just, I guess, killing them and hiring someone to do it. Okay. Is there yeah. a second? I'm comfortable with that. Is second I'll, I'll under, that. under discussion? I think that's a good idea. You know, I, obviously this runs, hunting runs through, what, mid-January, I believe? So if, if you can get the data, if we could still have a limited three, four week one if, if the data shows that. Once we have the data compiled and have a report for you with this information, we'll bring it back no matter when it is. And if there's enough time, we'll look at that. I mean, it sounds like from the, the neighbors and the elder and staff that there's an increase, but it would be good to know the numbers and, and monitor that regularly. I agree. I, agree. I mean, 
it is a sanctuary, yes, but when there's no predators, uh, that's you know, obviously that's when starvation and disease can take over, and that would be uglier. Those would be uglier optics, I think. So, you know, some humane culling, I think, would be yeah. fine. All right, uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Number three, discussion with possible action on the approval of a utility easement from Wisconsin Public Service for the installation of an electric service for the new ball field at Baird. So as part of the Baird School property trade agreement, uh, the school district is required <coughs> to rebuild the park and install a new softball field with sports lighting. Uh, you'll see in the agenda packet there's a map showing it, um, showing you the location of where the ball field is. Uh, but then there's also some attachments in there showing the proposed easement location. Uh, so the easement is needed to provide the electric service to the ball field lighting. So this isn't for the school, this is for the park. Um, the park is currently under construction and about half completed. Uh, and if approved, this uh, electric service would be installed very quickly yet this fall. Uh, so staff is supportive of the easement and I would recommend approval. Questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Alderman Nicholson, second by Alderman Johnson. Discussion? <coughs> Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And please note Alderman Nicholson has joined us. All right, that one passed. And we are on to item four, discussion with possible action on hiring Robert E. Lee and Associates for $28,800 to complete the engineering for the stormwater management to accommodate the ball field and parking lot modifications. And I forgot to mention in there for Colburn Park, yeah, Colburn Park. so oh. I apologize. Uh, so this project is in regards to the stormwater management that we need in order to replace the single baseball field with two little league fields and also to modify the parking lot configuration to add more parking and make the circulation work a little bit better. Uh, so 650000 was allocated for this project uh, in the 2019 bond request. Uh, the scope of the work will include a site survey, a conceptual design, and then final bid documents for the stormwater management features. Four companies bid on the project, and we're recommending we go with the low vendor, who's Robert E. and Associates, uh, for a total cost of $28,800. Uh, we have worked with this company several times before on other stormwater management uh, designs, and they do a good job, and we're comfortable working with them again for this project. Motion by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Stoyer. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Four bidders, right? Oh, All right. makes me happy. Yeah. yeah. All right, that uh, brings us to informational director's report. Uh, so just a few things to note here. Uh, so right now in our parks, we're spreading a lot of engineered wood fiber, which is the wood chips for playgrounds. We're putting them at a lot of different parks, but it's kind of tough with the wet weather. Uh, tree pruning, our east side crew recently pruned uh, Deborah Lane, and we're on Grove Street right now, and the west side crew is pruning uh, Broadway Avenue. Uh, renovation work continues at Colburn Pool. Uh, the abatement work is completed, and the siding, roofing, and fence replacement has begun. Uh, the Ken Ewers Waterfowl Habitat Restoration Project is nearly completed. So if you go out there, it looks substantially different than it did uh, last year, so it's going well. Uh, so the Recreation Division worked really hard on, with all of our sports groups to try and reschedule the canceled games uh, due to all of the water issues we've had out this year. It's been a challenge, but we're getting a lot of those games rescheduled now. Uh, Walk for Wildlife uh, was a huge success, so we, and that's out at the Sanctuary. So we ended up with 571 walkers and we raised over $16,000 in donations. Um, this is a fundraiser for Our Paws, which is a group that fundraises and they, all of the money raised goes back to the sanctuary to help offset costs to rehabilitate the animals. So it's our biggest fundraising event each year and it was a big success. And then uh, this weekend, uh, there's going to be a 33rd Annual Kids Autumn Adventure. Uh, it'll be on Saturday from 10 to 2, and it's sponsored by the Thursday Breakfast Optimist Club of Green Bay. So this is also a great event. It runs from 11 to 1. It's a free event to the public, so if you have a chance to go out there, I would recommend it. It's a great event. And that concludes my director's report. Motion to proceed to place some Second. 
Motion by Lemon Stoyer, second by Oliver Johnson to receive in place of final discussion. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Oliver Johnson, second by Nicholson. Those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We're adjourned.